I'm Dave Hudson. This is Road Rage Customs. Today I'm working on a 2010 Chevy Silverado with the same problem they all have. The horn just sounds way too friendly. But we're going to fix it. Klein Automotive Air Horns GM TRK1 train horn kit. Direct fit, bolt on, minimal drilling required. I'm going to show you how to install it. With the fuse out of the fuse holder, connect the main power supply to the fuse on top of the battery. I'm going to use the self-drilling screw that came with the kit to mount the relay. I labeled the sides of the relay so I knew which pin was facing which direction and I used the mounting screw as the grounding point for the relay. These four bolts need to come out of the spare battery tray on the driver's side front. These four little bolts will later be replaced with these longer bolts so that they can fit through the new bracket that holds the tank and compressor. There's two different ways to mount the tank and compressor depending on the year model of the vehicle. Here are the four holes to use to mount the compressor. The horns mount to the horn mount bracket with two bolts each. Here's how you connect the lines. Remove the nut. Slide the nut over the tube. There's a barb on the fitting. Slide the tube all the way over the barb and then tighten the nut. The kit includes all of the electrical connectors that you'll need, but I already had some uh, heat shrink tubing and some solder, so I went ahead and just soldered most of the connections. So I've got the horns pre wired and pre plumbed and bolted to the mounting bracket. Now I'm ready to climb underneath. I've got the truck safely secured on some drive up ramps. The truck is in park. The parking brake is on, and I've got a wheel chalk behind the rear wheel. These two bolts in the front lower engine splash shield need to come out. They will be replaced by new bolts that come with the kit. I scraped off the greasy waxy stuff to get a little bit better of a connection. I'm going to spray a little bit of paint on there so it doesn't rust. Before I fish this airline up to the top, I stuck a vacuum cap on the end of the airline. That's going to keep trash and debris out of the line. When you bring the solenoid power wire and the airline up through the engine compartment to the top, make sure you don't hit the belt, the electric fan, or anything that will move and cut it or get hot and melt it. With your tank and compressor assembly pre-assembled, you can slide it into place. The two bolts between the compressor and the fender you can get to with a long extension, an impact, and a 10 millimeter. 
The two bolts under the tank require a long quarter inch drive extension and a 10 millimeter universal socket. Connect the air line from the solenoids to the elbow on the back of the air tank. I've installed the fitting on the back of the filter. Mount the compressor inlet filter somewhere high and dry. Keep it away from hood hinges, fans, belts, anything that'll move and cause damage. Okay, so the wiring. I've got the main power supply connected to the battery with the fuse removed. And then it goes through this small convoluted tubing. And I've got it zip tied to the other convoluted tubing along the back of the firewall beside the fuse box and connected to pin 30 on the relay. Pin 86 I've got connected to this black wire and it is grounded at the screw mounting the relay. The red wire from the compressor goes to pin 87 on the relay. The black wire from the compressor goes to ground. I've just extended one of the pressure switch wires. It's going to go to pin 85 on the relay. The other one is going to be extended and it goes to switched power. If you're not sure how to find a switched power source, take a grounded test light, connect it to the wire you hope to use, turn the key on. If your test light lights up, that's switched power. At this point, there's two ways you can wire it. You can wire it to work with the existing horn button or with the horn button that comes with the kit. I'm gonna drill a hole and add the replacement horn button so this panel needs to come off. Okay, this trailer brake unit is in the way. It's gotta come off. stuff kind of easy. So here's the switch now that it's installed. Just your basic two wire switch. One wire is going to go to power. The other wire is going to go to the horn solenoid. The only other wire that is left is switched power for the relay. You just connect it to switched power under the dash. Once everything's wired up, put the dash back together. So now it's time to see how long it takes to air up that one gallon tank. Well, the only thing left to do is compare the two horns. <laughs> 